everybody, it's Tyler here at the Michigan State Championship, checking in team number 2337, Engine Nerds. Engine Nerds had a fantastic season so far with the blue banner under their bell as well, too. And I love Engine Nerds and what they have to bring. I just watched them on the field the last match, and they're just absolutely solid throughout the whole way. They have a fantastic arm, an end effector as well, too. We'll be talking about some of their programming, autonomous, and what's gone into this fantastic machine. Let's learn more about Engine Nerds here on Charged Up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. If you're attending championships, come to the Fun and FRC Discord Meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the Fun and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the Fun or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Alex, let's start off on this fantastic machine talking about your arm. I mean, this is just a sweet looking arm and uh, it's been performing so well in the field. So talk to me about how did you even come up with it and some of the composition of it as well? Yeah, so at the beginning of the season, we thought that it was really important to be able to score on both sides of the robot. So we really take advantage of we. This is where we intake our cones or whatever, and then we score on that side. So. Oh, then the second thing we took in consideration is we wanted the weight of the robot to be way down at the bottom and be able to just fly across the field without having to worry about how tippy the robot is. So we use these carbon fiber tubes in order, um, in order to keep a weight and still have rigidity because in our testing we used PVC pipes in order to make this and it was a little too wobbly for our liking. So we decided to go with a more solid structure. And another thing we did is we decided to use our motors at at the bottom of the robot instead of like where they needed like up here because we decided we wanted the weight all the way down uh, then we also another interesting thing is our tensioners are all wrenches that we put inside the robot and then these help make sure to keep these belts all nice and tight and we also decided to use l3 swerves this year to just be able to go faster around so that really helped us go uh, I think that's a good segue to go into your end effector as well, too, and Christian's going to be talking more about uh, that and what's gone into it. Uh, a couple things I'd love to hear just in regards to your end effector is, like, when you were uh, uh, looking at it from a packaging standpoint, how did you figure out, like, this is the correct width for engineers to go with? And obviously it's been working out well for you, so I'd just love to hear what's gone into it. Uh, it has. So we started testing pretty early with rollers and actually found that they were more versatile than we expected. Uh, during preseason stuff, we made it, or not preseason, excuse me, during week two, we managed to find that a cone can actually run clean through these, which was a bit of a concern. So we thought of putting a hard stop in. And then once we had this hard stop here, we realized that you can actually react the cube off of a solid dead axle, and it intakes it just fine. So then it was just finding a compact way to store uh, enough rollers to intake a, a cone and a reaction bar for the cube. So we got this triangle configuration because uh, we were actually inspired by a pizza slice, ironically. So uh, once we had that on the robot, we had to figure out how to run it. We are originally going to try to do two motors, one on each side, like the one you see over here. But because we want weight to be as low as possible, as Alex was saying, uh, we decided to try and get that other motor for rotating the orientation of the intake to be lower down inside the robot. So it's actually driven with a brake cable mechanism, which we think is pretty impressive. So uh, we have cables here that use, once again, ratchet wrenches to help spool themselves up and keep tension. And then those cables transfer to a brake cable system that you can see running along the full length of the arm here. And then that's just a push-pull onto this pulley where we have an encoder, so we always get an absolute position no matter where the arm is. And that's actually worked out great so far this season. We've had a few kinks here and there, but we managed to work them all out, which is very convenient for us. Uh, the other side is just a Neo running a belt. We found that higher speed seems to work better, so we've ended up with a 20 to 1 ratio on the Neo, as opposed to the original 40 to 1 we were testing. And the width of the intake was actually determined just based on the width of a cube. It's literally wide enough they can take a cube at an angle, and that was our logic for the first design. We started prototyping, and it seemed to be working well, so we've never had to change from there. So we can intake cubes right through there, and we just react off that hex shaft. And it was convenient for us because it meant uh, one less roller, which is a lot less weight. That's how we keep the weight of the intake down to just over four pounds. 
As we continue on this robot here, uh, you know, so much cool, more cool stuff to talk about, but let's go into your arm positions, and I know Nick is going to uh, cover more of that. So I'd love to hear about uh, anything that, from the back end you want to talk about, like the math even that goes into or anything like that. But just in general, of course, we'll showcase some of those positions, but anything else you want to add uh, into it, I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, so we have three different absolute encoders on our, mo on our arm. We have one over here on the wrist. Uh, we have one, if you look at the blinking lights down on the shoulder, and then we have one over here on the elbow. And so our main problem with keeping the motors down low is that if we were trying to run off of the uh, encoders inside the motor, uh, you would get a ton of slippage and slop from the ropes and the belts all the way up here. And we wanted to make sure we were as accurate as possible. So each of these are just on the shaft so that we're getting the absolute position of everything right there. And then from there, it's basic, simple PIDs up to each uh, arm position. So can we show off some of the positions, just kind of narrate what they are for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so right here is where we score mid. So you can tell that based on the LEDs, we're scoring a cone. So, um, and so the idea here is that for every position, we have different exterior positions. Like for carry, when we bring this down, like if we were to try to go directly from the substation up and then down, we would end up uh, basically smacking directly in. So we actually have different uh, programs to move the shoulder independently and the elbow independently, and then we loop through those. So if we know that we went to the substation, our next one, we move the elbow back, and then we fold all the way in so that we can get a clear release straight out. Yeah, this robot, like I said, it's really a complete package, and it's so cool to hear more about this. Let's start to wrap up and talk more of the autonomous features uh, that are on this robot. Uh, like I said, just watch your last match, Madison, and uh, you know you're doing two definitely every time, getting that three as well too. And uh, love to just hear more about uh, what some of your autos are, and maybe even like feature plans for them too. Yeah. So uh, one unique thing about our robot is that we actually don't use any type of vision for any of our autons. We're simply using Path Planner to write out all the paths for our autons. And then we've just tuned them down. We spent lots of time working with them, practicing with them. Uh, probably our best Auton at the moment is a three game piece and balance Auton. Uh, we spent a lot of time working on tuning that one and getting it consistent. We found that cubes are more consistent to pick up just based on our intake design. So we start out scoring one cone low so that we can really uh, maximize our time. And then we score two cubes, one high, one mid. In addition to that Auton, we also have a three-piece auton over the bump. We were able to slow it down enough so that the bump really didn't cause any changes to our odometry, and we were able to be relatively consistent. Well, engineers, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about your machine. I mean, it, like I said, I watched it. It's phenomenal, and I can tell you're super proud of what your robot has been this year. So, of course, good luck here at MSC. Hope to see you at Worlds as well, too, and just keep being awesome. Thanks a lot, engineers. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gd forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.